We were rehearsing Twilight and Cressida. The scene where Hector, believing he was among friends, was brutally murdered by them without warning, and his body dragged from the battlefield tied to a horse's tail. Leonard, I came here for an interview, not for a lecture on Shakespeare. Now, tell us this remarkable story of your resurrection. It's a grave tale, Snipe, and difficult to write. But I'm sure you can rise to the occasion. Love, sweet queen and noble wife, I alone remain to bring delivery of your pain. Severed my darling too quickly from this life of fires drawn and of memories met, I shall hold our two hearts again in single time. Tell me these things. And then something crept across the land and blighted it. The trees lost their foliage. The flowers languished and died. The shrubs grew brown and shriveled. The grain fields perished. And the lakes and ponds became black and stagnant. The land withered as before a plague. A plague? Yes, Mr. Winthrop. A plague of evil. Victoria, for three years I have rested beside you. Tonight, the glorious moon has risen to the exact position which last occurred 2,000 years ago, signaling the opening of this crypt and the beginning of our greatest adventure. We shall embark to the land of Egypt, where years ago in a mountain overlooking the valley of the pharaohs, I did prepare for us a wondrous shrine unknown by any living man. There, my beloved, awaits the key to resurrection for you and eternal life for both of us. respect that makes calamity so long life <laughs> what are you doing Stop, please. Stop it, please. You're making me sick. Why do you turn please. away? Please. Why do you turn away? <coughs> you are infected. No. I have come for my son. He will die at midnight. If you must take a life, take mine. I will have killed nine times in my life, Dr. Vesalius. 
How many murders can be attributed to you? None. I did not kill your wife. No? I tried to save her. With a knife in your hand, doctor, I have no faith in your profession. I was told after my crash that I would never speak again. The doctors were, of course, wrong. For as you see and can hear, I have used my knowledge of music and acoustics to recreate my voice. You don't have to remind me of your ingenuity, Dr. Fibes. Where? Where is my son? May I give you one final reminder, Dr. Vesalius? You will see your son under circumstances which may bring back memories to you. Where is he? Waiting as we all must wait. Don't play your foul games with me, Fives. If ever a man deserves to die, it's you. You cannot threaten the dead with death, my friend. Only with life, eternal life. So that's it. The key. My key. Yes, even now I hear her. Yes, alive, deranged. In fury, can you not hear her voice? Where? In the name of God, where? Below, twisting, turning, scratching at the lid with bloody fingernails, staring, screaming, wild with fury, the strength of madness in her. Can you not hear her voice? She calls my name, Roderick, Roderick. Hello, I'm Butch. Hey, dishy, dishy hair. <laughs> Can't wait to get my hands on it. Who's this great big beautiful thing with you? Is he yours? Well, only just. Come on, baby, let me get to it. <laughs> let me get at it, huh? You just sit there, baby, and relax. Hmm? She won't be long. But you I will kill. But you can't, Doctor. I am already dead. Your son needs you. All of you freaks, mutations. Why do you think I came here? You 